So what's the difference between embodied dynamical cognition and the computational conception? Beer claims that the key issue is not so much the accuracy with which the environment is represented, but rather on the agent's continuous engagement with it. In embodiment theory, the aim of cognition is to stabilize coordinated patterns of behavior. Rather than containing representations, neuronal states use the mathematical tools of dynamical systems theory to structure possible behavioral trajectories. Van Gelder and Beer produce very similar arguments against the notion that representation is the goal and end product of cognition. If we accept that representations are stand-ins for actual objects, the embodiment idea that agents are in continuous direct contact with relevant objects means that stand-ins aren't required. In other words, the agent has no need for representational states. The robot maker Brooks says that his robots don't rely on representations. They use the world as its own best model, end quote. Andy Clark proposes three arguments for a dynamic cognitive science. First, both the body and the world, including time, movement, and so on, all matter and play powerful roles in adaptive problem solving. Secondly, the body and the world matter not simply because they provide an arena for useful action and a sensitive perceptual front end, but because neural, bodily, and environmental elements are intimately intermingled in the processes of continuous reciprocal causation. Thirdly, the traditional tools of computational and representational analysis, the input-compute-act cycle, fail to capture such complex interactive processes. Consequently, the mathematical and topological resources of dynamic systems theory are to be preferred. Clark describes his position as the radical embodied cognition thesis. He states that the structured symbolic representational and computational views of cognition are mistaken. Embodied cognition is best studied using non-computational and non-representational ideas and the tools of dynamic systems theory. This applies even to some quite low-level sensory motor activities, such as finger wiggling, infant walking, etc. But Clark adds that, one, standard, the standard cognitive framework is still the best for higher-level cognition, and two, even at the lower levels, some aspects of systemic unfolding might still reward a more traditional analysis. Clark quotes Scott Kelso as to the ultimate conclusion of dynamic embodied cognition, quote, The human brain is fundamentally a pattern-forming self-organized system governed by non-linear dynamical laws. Rather than compute 
our brain dwells at least for short times in metastable states, end quote. Metastability means that a system can exist in long-lived states that are less stable than its most stable state. Also known as the ground state, this is the system's lowest energy state. Any state with energy greater than the ground state is called an excited state. So the brain uses unstable higher energy states to manage its basic cognition.